Hi there, in this series of videos I'm making a version of the Midway Games Boot Hill video game uh, featuring tanks instead of the original cowboys. The first few videos are going to deal with setting up the game as a local couch dual player uh, and then the later videos we're going to look at moving to use UDP to allow the game to be played over the local network. So that's kind of exciting. Um, in this video I'm going to set up the game and get the tanks moving. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop uh, these two sprites in. Um, should we make them red? And, yeah, actually, let's make them that color and that color. I'm going to drag these two sprites in from Kenny Assets. So I'm going to create this as art. And then inside here, I'm going to create another folder called Tanks. And I'm going to drag and drop these into here uh, and I'm just gonna so these are 160 by 132 160 by 132 I'm gonna make them both uh, one pixel per unit and I'm gonna scale the camera accordingly um, these are single sprites um, yep bilinear is fine uh, type tight Linear, apply, my textures. Uh, okay, so maybe I don't need compression. None. It's just apply none, none compression. So when I drag this uh, this particular one onto the scene, you see that it's absolutely massive. Uh, so obviously we need to scale the camera out accordingly because that's currently the size of the camera. Um, and we can do that just by and kind of roughly where we want the the size of the sprite to be so that is going to be 460 roughly so let's make it 450 because that seems like a round number so when we look at it in the game uh is that good enough uh i think that's actually a not bad size because we're only interested in, in this being an exercise in, in udp so the actual scale of the the game doesn't matter uh, the tank itself, though, we've got to move that back a little bit. Uh, no, I want to keep the camera there. But we do want to move the X of this tank back a little bit, which is going to be, um, my guess would be minus 230. would bring it back to there. So that would be 60. Uh, fifty. 600 okay let's make that 600 there to the start and i'm going to use the new input system i think i need to install it so i'm going to do that just now uh we're actually going to get well you know what maybe we don't want the new input system because i'm actually going to remove that so what i want to do is i want to create a blank object so i want to create empty object and then this one is going to be um uh, left tank uh, and left tank I'm going to copy the transform copy component and then paste component values so that when I make this a child of this uh, all the, the the values go to zero zero because they're actually off this node here because this is the thing that we're actually going to be moving I'm just going to make sure we're recording this okay so now that we have that we're going to do a very, very simple uh, keyboard controller, and that's all we're going to do. So we're going to do uh, WASD for this tank here and the arrow keys for the blue tank, just so that we can control them. That's the only reason we got that there. So I'm going to call this tank uh, green tank sprite. Um, and so we're going to have a great folder and this is going to be well actually we probably should use the new input system because we need to we need to set the input method so i'm going to create scripts um, and then inside here i'm going to say um, player controllers and I'm going to call this one manual. Oh, no, I want a 
the script in here. Manual controller. Because at the end of this, we're going to have a machine. We're going to have a game that's controlled by one player locally and one player remotely. So one player has to be able to move the keys. So we're going to use the arrow keys for that main player. Um, so do I need to install the package? I think I do. Let me just check. Uh, where are we? Package manager. That's the one I'm looking for. Uh, no, 2D Pixel Perfect installed. Sprite, 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 Sprite. Uh, Oh, these are packages in project. Needs to be registry. Okay, input system. That's the one we want. And this is verified. Okay, so I want to install that. So what I'm going to do is this project's new, but the native platform backend for the new input system are not enabled in the player settings. Uh, do you want to enable the back ends doing so? We'll restart the editor and disable the old engine input. Yes. Okay, so I guess that's, uh, yeah, let's save that. Okay, so that's going to reboot. So we're going to open up this class here and we're going to add an input action. So I'm going to say public input action. Uh, and I'm going to add that to Unity system. I'm going to call this movement. Um, and it, it needs to be enabled and disabled when the object becomes enabled and disabled. If you don't enable it, it's not going to work. So I'm going to do void uh, on enable uh, movement dot enable uh, private void on disable movement dot disable. And that's that. Now, when we go back to here, uh, we can click on left tank and then we have our movement here uh, and I can add the binding and I'm going to add a binding for 2D vector composite. Uh, and the reason why it's 2D vector composite is because we have two one dimensional vectors. We've got a horizontal and we have a vertical. So I'm going to add that there. Uh, and you see that we now have our, our binding here. So we have up, down, left, right. So we don't have a binding yet. So if you double click it, you can choose the path. Um, and then I'm going to choose W for the keyboard. Um, and then this is going to be S for the keyboard. And then it is going to be A for the keyboard. Uh, and then right is going to be D for the keyboard. And that's going to give us our movement. And then we're going to add the movement to the the we're going to do that in the update so um if we go back to our script we now have uh, our uh, update method so we can say uh, transform dot position plus equals uh, movement dot get value uh, get Read value, sorry. Uh, vector two. Um, oh yeah, shoot. Yeah, you can't do that. Hang a sec. Um, far um, change. Oh, let's call it delta because that's a fancier name. Equals movement reader vector value times whatever the speed is. I'm going to say 20 times time dot delta time whatever the delta is uh, and then we're going to say transform dot position plus equals delta uh, and it's not going to like that um, three and then it's going to be delta dot x um, delta dot y and uh, it's going to transform dot position dot z, whatever the existing position is on the z. Okay, so we're going to go grab the the value from uh, the input. We're going to multiply it by some arbitrary value. We'll see if that works. And when we move up, down, left, right, it should should. Okay, that's us playing. 
There we go, it's far too slow. So really, I mean, this is the number of units per second. So um, we wanna kind of get across there in like 400 units. Uh, Cause I think it's like, this is minus 600 that we're at. So 400 should get us to about here in about a second. Okay, there you go, that's a little bit faster. So there's our tank movement. Uh, and that is working just great. Uh, and we can do the exact same thing for our left-hand tank. And we'll do that just now. Say the exact same thing. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but I'm going to do that right now. Actually, before I do that, what I should do is I should also add a binding for fire as well. So I'm going to add a binding here. Uh, and that path is going to be... Um, for control on the keyboard. Uh, do I want control on the keyboard? Uh, shift, left shift on the keyboard. That's what I want, left shift on the keyboard. Um, and that's gonna allow us to fire. So if I go back to the code again, um, I can say uh, if movement dot read value, um, I think we can do bull. Oh uh, no, I don't want. Oh no, 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 no! I don't want movement. Oops, I did a mistake there. Um, delete that. I want to add a binding. Oh no! I think I need a separate one. Sorry. Uh, let's do public input action fire enable enable fire dot disable okay and then I want to say if um, fire dot get a read value bool debug dot log fire um, and so this is going to add a binding here and the binding is going to be shift left shift on the keyboard okay um, I think I can reprocess it there I'm going to leave it just now because we're going to handle the, the, the firing in the server anyway. So if I go to the console, so I can move here, and if I press left shift, oh, oh, oh it does not like it. Um, oh, value float, that's why. Float uh, is greater than zero. That makes more sense, because it's a button. So it's either, I mean, it could be granular, it could be like the trigger. So again, if I press the that there, you can see that we got fire. And if I hold it down, then it keeps firing, which is fine because I'm going to handle the cooldown on the server side as well. So that's done. I'm now going to do the same thing on the blue side. Now that I've got the blue tank here, I'm going to change the WSAD keys uh, to instead be the left keys, the left uh, arrow keys. So I'm going to do left. Uh, Left on the keyboard. Uh, where is it? Left arrow. There you go. Left arrow keyboard. So sorry. <clears throat> w is up. So I need to do the up arrow. Uh, and then down is going to be the down arrow. And then the left arrow. And then the right arrow. Right arrow on the keyboard, okay. And then the fire is going to be the right shift on the keyboard. Okay, so now I should be able to control both with the keyboard. There we go. That's it. I'm using both the left and the right key. So 
that is our input done and I think that's a good place to stop the video um, for this one. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is the Boot Hill uh, series that I'm working on. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and share on social media. It really does help the channel. Uh, and if you didn't like it, um, please, uh, please tell me. Uh, let me know in the comments below what I can do better, what videos you want to see. If you'd like to remind us of when I post up a new video, click that subscribe button, which is just down below there, and tap the notification bell, and YouTube will let you know when I post a new video, which is mostly every Thursday. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.